here, show of hands, who here has ever experienced a day where your mind felt like this? <laughs> Me too. Let's push pause for a moment. I call a pause any intentional shift in behavior. A pause can start with the little things. It could be a walk around the block at lunch. It might be having a moment to yourself on a street corner while everything is busy. It could be a risky conversation with a friend. It can even be a mindful moment to yourself. Let's take one now. Go ahead and put your hand on your belly. We'll take a belly breath, breath pause. Close your eyes if you're comfortable and inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your eyes. Who here feels different? Show of hands. Me too. So why is this so challenging? Why is it so hard to pause? Welcome to the pause paradox. We are set up not to pause. And if we do, we think we'll look like slackers. We live in an always-on society where we're rewarded for our rapid pace and our never-ending to-do list. In our Western world, especially in the technology industry, burnout is seen as almost inevitable. Now, I am all for productivity, but it doesn't have to be this way. If we choose to work on this as individuals, we can help save our careers, our health, and our well-being. Think of the word pause. Traditionally, it's a word of rest. What I'm proposing is to flip it on its head, where pause is no longer <coughs> passive. It's active. It's not a weakness. It's a strength. Pausing can be intentional and becomes an action word. If you're one of these folks who is a high achiever and is rewarded for your rapid pace and enjoys it, great. But we need to make pausing intentional. Rather than reverting to tradi traditional breaks like having a Netflix binge watch party on a Saturday night or going to a tropical vacation with our toes dipped in the sand, have the courage to do something that's meaningful for you. That courage means looking at yourself and pushing pause when you feel the need to check in and align and also see if it's refueling you. Rollo May, an existential psychiatrist, would have called this neurotic anxiety where we are so afraid to be with ourselves and our real anxiety and ask questions like, who am I or what's next? Existentialist philosopher Paul Tillich wrote Courage to Be. And he states why being is so scary. He says it's a choice. And quotes, decision is a risk rooted in the courage of being free. What if? Each of us had the courage and the insights to steer clear of burnout, get out of overwhelm, and thrive. That courage means looking at ourselves to know when to push pause when we feel that we're in the danger zone. And if we're not doing this, how can we expect anything to be different? Are you willing to push pause and bust through the pause paradox? For the first time in history, the World Health Organization recently classified burnout as an occupational hazard. It's not quite a medical condition yet. Th thinking of burnout, it can we can define it as any number of things. It's defined as chronic stress not successfully managed and consists of three things. Feeling mentally depleted or exhausted, increased mental distance from a job or negativism, or decreased professional efficacy. All of these can be possible, but what if we all took a stand and decided for ourselves 
that we wanted to steer clear of burnout and create the boundaries that we need to thrive. According to a Gallup poll of 7,500 full-time employees, two out of three thought that they were feeling burned out sometimes, often, or always. And it's costing us 125 to 190 US billion dollars annually in healthcare costs, things like type 2 diabetes, chronic health disease, and high cholesterol, even premature death before the age of 45. But what if burnout, stress, or overwhelm was the greatest gift that could possibly happen to you? Instead of thinking of it as a burnout, it can become a blessing. What if each of us decided when we're on that brink of burnout, when we think that we're going to know what's going to happen next, that we choose to take a stand when we're in that crucible moment, when we can no longer tolerate another sleepless night or another knot in our stomach, that we choose to take a stand and push pause to intentionally shift our behavior. I reached my burnout blessing <laughs> several years ago when I was working at a technology company. On paper, I was the envy of all my friends. But when I would be out socializing, there I would be, two feet away, lost in my emails. How many of you want to compulsively check your emails right now or do something different? It's a challenge. We can all relate. I was getting feedback at work that I wasn't meeting expectations. And this was a pretty big surprise, as I had been one of those achievers most of my life. I was feeling like I was hitting my head against a wall, lost in a mental tailspin, and feeling like a failure. One day, my manager sat me down and said, Rachel, I don't think this is working out. You might want to consider doing something else. And that was my crucible moment. I did some research and pitched my case for a three-month unpaid break. And I know that's a rarity. Only 14% of global or US companies offer any kind of paid or unpaid leave. During this time, I chose not to fill up my to-do list. Instead, I decided to have some deep contact with myself and figure out who I really was. I asked trusted friends what they thought my strengths were. It turns out having strength awareness is one of the first things that leads to happiness on the job where we can really engage and flourish. This is how I used my burnout as personal fuel. I did return to work, but things were different. I was way more present, and I, I started finding more happiness at work, and this helped my manager be happier and my team be happier, and we were more productive and creative. This had a ripple effect for everyone. For everyone. I also found things that were key to my strengths. I only looked for roles that played to those. And this also helped me feel more aligned and have the confidence again to go forward. I also started doing more meaningful things. I ho hosted speakers who I thought had important messages to share. And some of them became my mentors, who I still work with today, Drs. Bob and Judith Wright. The point is, if I had had the foresight or the 2020 awareness to know that I was on the path of burnout, I would have pushed pause way before things had gotten so bad. So each of us can turn burnout into personal fuel. But you need to pause first. And here's the three steps to follow. The first one is to navigate the negativity. Expect negativity. And with overwhelm comes a huge negativity bias. It's really hard to escape that. But focusing on the positive helps. So ask yourself this one question. What good can come from the situation? This one question can be a huge game changer and really change everything. In my case, I didn't know about this question. But I chose to focus on the positive. And I told myself every day, the perfect job finds me, as I showed up 
it became my mantra, and I looked for that, that new job I was looking for. It also turns out that we need it. When we're feeling stressed or burned out or in that fight or flight mode, we can't even see the positive, and it's staring us in the face. So we really need to create it. Number two, get courageously curious. This isn't easy, but if you are open to the questions and the answers that follow, it may not be pleasant, and it may not even be what you want to hear. Think of whatever you discover as just data. When I was on my pause, I chose to get courageously curious and look at what I was willing to change in my career. This helped me learn about what I was willing to do and trust that I was OK, even though I didn't have all the answers. And three, be your own disruptor. And by this, I mean be a rule maker, not a rule breaker. And what this is is by making moment by moment decisions, create the boundaries or the rules that help set you up for success. During my pause, I chose to create a few rules, like not checking my emails for more than 30 minutes at a time, no more than twice a day, and choosing to leave the house by 10 AM. So that's it. Navigate the negativity, get courageously curious, and be your own disruptor. If you do all these three things, hopefully way before burnout, you will check in and align and know that you're OK. So, how do we make all this happen? Well, we can create what I call an active pause plan. Remember, pausing isn't passive, it's active. And I invite you all to do this with me right now if you want to grab a pen and paper. So number one, pick a situation or a challenge that you're facing right now. This could be spending more quality time with a loved one, or wanting to put your digital device away by a certain amount of time. Whatever it is, think about it, and just note something down that you're willing to change right now. Number two, set an intention. And this is really about how you want to be. It could be the result that you want to create. So maybe you want to have your devices off by 9 PM, or have your passion project start at 3 PM on a Saturday. Whatever that, whatever that is for you, talk about what this would be, or put it down on paper. And number three, what's your time frame? So this isn't about figuring out every minute little detail of what time you're willing to spend, but the broad brush strokes and see what works for you. Whatever time that is, you can be willing to commit to it. And the, and the key is try to do this by bedtime tonight. So you've got the active pause plan. And remember that busy moment that we saw in the beginning of this talk? The next time this happens, are you willing to push pause? Are you willing to turn the lessons of burnout into personal fuel? And remember, the golden rule is if you're breathing, it's an opportunity to pause. <laughs> As Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl reminds us, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. So in your response, will you choose to push pause, to navigate the negativity, to get courageously curious, and to be your own disruptor? That is the power to push pause. Thank you.